On the show today, it's the best of 2017. We take a look back at our favorite stories from the past year. From a life-changing strength coach to a lesson in perseverance. Sit back and enjoy these stories of inspiration and encouragement. Game On starts right now. What is up? Welcome to a special year-end edition of Game On. I'm Matt Warner, joined by Rhett McGibbon and Bobby Bolig. And today we're going to focus on our favorite stories over the past year. Yeah, and I will say it wasn't easy trying to pick just no, three stories. True. But I will say the ones we did pick are very memorable. Yeah, you can almost say they were inspirational in a lot of ways. And if you don't mind, guys, I'm going to start off with my favorite story. Take it away, Rhett. Lead Thanks. the way. Thanks. Well, the man you're about to meet reminds me of Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. For over several decades, Dave Williams has been doing just that for the Flames, and the wake of his love for Christ is truly something to behold. When I was just a little kid, I got excited about strength and muscles. And I just, my, my earliest memory was of my grandmother reading the Bible to me and read about Samson. And I thought, man, I would love to be like that. All that strength and all that ability. And that was just my earliest memory of somebody with muscles doing something big. And I wanted to be like that. It was a childhood dream that would prove to be a lifelong calling. For Dave Williams, the pursuit of strength led him to the football field. He was an All-American and NAIA national champion in college and then continued to pursue his passion for strength training during his subsequent military service. A few years later, Williams' passion would lead him to take a big step of faith, leaving a high school teaching job in Virginia and moving his family to Alabama for a grad assistant position on the Crimson Tide's strength staff. That time under legendary head coach Bear Bryant would pay off as the following year Williams was named the head strength coach at Texas A&M. By faith, God took care of us step by step. That was a big learning experience for me. Texas A&M only had one strength coach and he had only been there two years. So whatever I did had to work. Despite early success with the Aggies, Coach Williams had a longing to work in Christian education. While visiting friends back in Virginia, he toured a relatively new college that shared his passion, Liberty Baptist. After talking with the school's athletic director, it didn't take long for Williams to know Liberty is where he wanted to be. I gave him my whole story. He said, Dave, you really want to be here, don't you? And I said, yeah, I really do. He said, well, you know what? We're not going to get anxious about it, are we? I said, no, we're just going to pray and wait on it. And, uh, he said, uh, well, we're going to pray for you, and uh, when, when God's ready for you to come, he's going to open the door and let you come. That was like four months later. We came here, my wife and I both, in agreement that this is like a home mission field for us. Bill Gillespie was Coach Williams' first assistant at Liberty, and they shared a common goal. He shows so much appreciation and his enthusiasm for what he does, and you want it's contagious, so you want to be a part of it. We knew we were both here for the same reason. It wasn't like... We're here to make money. We're here to get ahead. We're here to do this or that. We're here because God wants us to be here. We want to serve the Lord here and reach the athletes for Christ. And for Gillespie, Coach Williams' impact wouldn't stop in the weight room. He took me under his wing. He taught me how to be a strength coach. But he also taught me how to be a husband. He taught me how to be a father. I came to Liberty to study the youth ministry because I wanted to reach young people for Christ. I never thought it would ever be through strength and condition. But if it wasn't for Coach Williams teaching me how to be a man of God, a husband for God, a father for God, and a strength coach for God, I, I, I would never have been in that role, and I never would have had that small role of playing in helping reach the world for Christ here at Liberty University. And reaching student athletes for Christ was Coach Williams' top priority. That's extremely humbling to know that God's using you or has used you at times to change people's lives. And then Barry Rice is the biggest one I can tell you. I've never seen a ch more changed life ever. A tough offensive lineman from rural Virginia, Barry Rice struggled balancing the fierceness of the sport with his Christian walk. I wanted to be the best player that I possibly could be because I had a goal. I wanted to run everybody over. But Coach Williams, taught me this one thing. 
that you want to be the best football player that you could be because it's a testimony for Jesus. And I said, yeah, 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 that's right. We want to do that, but, but I wanted to be the strongest guy on the football team. I wanted to be respected. I wanted to be the man. For the first time in my life, when I would spend time with Coach Williams in the weight room, I would see a strong man, a man that was tough as nails, but a man that undeniably loved Jesus Christ more than anything else on this earth. And that challenged me. I, I mean, that really challenged me. There was this, this collision of my selfishness of wanting to run over everybody that got in my way so that I could accomplish my goal and the selflessness of Dave Williams and his love for Jesus Christ and wanting to honor Jesus in everything he did. Every morning, 7.30 a.m., I had an appointment. Coach Williams said, I want you to be here, and this is just like a weight room workout, and what we're going to do is we're going to open the Bible. We're going to look at this word, and we're going to learn it. And he said, you know, Psalm 119, we read that verse in 11, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And man, this guy challenged me to memorize the word of God, taught me principles of how to live and what a true man was. Not Dave Williams, but Jesus Christ. See, that's, that's what a true man was and is, it's Jesus. And uh, Dave Williams was the embodiment of teaching me about that and to hide God's word in my heart. Changed lives, the legacy of a coach focused on the eternal. Hey man, how you doing brother? Yeah, we're not. This has been my home for 33 years, I can't leave. The annual spring game felt a little different for Coach Williams this year. He recently retired after more than three decades and was being honored for his faithful service. The hugs and thank yous from current and former student athletes flowed freely. It's bittersweet, but even though his time leading the weight room has come to an end, the legacy Coach Williams leaves behind is best measured by the lives forever changed. One on one, one on team, there was a huge impact. But he made disciples. And from them disciples, you can go all across America and find the Dave Williams influence in being coached all across America. So how many people were touched? In 33 years, just the athletes, the coaches, the teachers, the people that he, he was around, tons. How many disciples did he make? Lots and he's made a huge difference in many, many, many people's lives. He made me a better person. He made me a better Christian, and he made me a better player. And uh, I just pray and hope that I could have the impact on someone like he's had on me. You know, guys, I watched this story, Dave Williams. He's a guy, you know, top of his field, really, you could yeah. say that, and I think he could have worked at any university across the country, but in some ways, it's a great story for just the everyday person in the sense that you go where God wants you to be yep. and you're gonna have a great life, a happy life, and I feel like that is what worked out for Dave Williams. He was right here at Liberty where God wanted him and it was the perfect scenario for him. Yeah, and I, I will say that, I think Bill Gillespie said it best in that interview. He said, his passion for other people is contagious. And mm -hmm. I mean, when I talked to him a little bit a few weeks ago, I got the same sense that he just, the love for he has for everybody yeah. is just, Amazing. Yeah, we heard from a lot of those people on social media after we posted that piece. How many people that commented and said, he made a huge impact on my life, and that just tells you about the legacy that he's leaving behind. Well, hey, coming up, he came to the U.S. from Norway to play college football, but instead he would learn a lesson about perseverance. And speaking of perseverance, I needed plenty of it when coaching a certain someone. More game on after this. Wide. Church still controlling and scores. Wow. Here's Ryan on the breakaway. Scores. Save rebound comes out. Scores. I 
I'm Marty Mischens. I'm a master firefighter with the Lynchburg Fire Department. I started out with residential coursework at Liberty back in 2000, and I've also been a member of the Coast Guard Reserve since then. I completed a substantial amount of my general education requirements, and then 9-11 happened. And after spending time on active duty, I never went back to school. Liberty Online gave me the opportunity to easily get a bachelor's degree that was equivalent to my field of work. That has actually opened up opportunities for promotional processes in the public safety realm and also in the military in the future. Liberty Online has been really flexible with my schedule, having a family and having a full-time career with the Lynchburg Fire Department. I'm currently enrolled in the Master of Arts in the Executive Leadership Program. Liberty Online worked great with me to be able to transition from completing a bachelor's and turning right back around and getting into a master's program, which is something that I never thought that I would even consider. So I grew up in a Christian home. I was just kind of wishy-washy doing the, the Christian kid sort of thing uh, up through 11th grade where I had a friend uh, basically convert out of Christianity. It rocked my world a little bit. I wasn't exactly sure that people could actually do that. So it kind of put me on a little bit of a quest for truth for myself. I went to a Christian concert and there was a tent sponsored by Liberty. And he was like, you could sign up for this scholarship drawing that we have. As I signed up for the scholarship, I myself sent a prayer up, and a couple of songs later, they announced that I had won a $16,000 scholarship. I'd always kind of wanted to be an RA, and as I stepped into the role of prayer leader, it seemed logical to progress to another level, uh, to a spiritual life coach, and then to resident assistant. Uh, my experience at Liberty has been uh, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for the world. Hey, welcome back to Game On. With 2017 coming to an end, today we're looking back at our favorite stories over the past year. And Bobby, I understand yours comes to us from the gridiron. Yeah, if you were to ask Ernst Anderson, you know, what he has gained during his time with the Liberty Football Program, perseverance and perspective are the two main things that would come to mind. These qualities he developed here at Liberty have helped him face any challenge life might throw his way. My name is Ernst Anderson, and I come from Norway. I live in the south part of Norway, so I live 50 feet from the ocean. So my home is fishing, boating, and cold winters. Nothing like Lynchburg, Virginia. When I first got here, a big challenge for me was just speaking English, because you don't really use it that much in Norway. So in the classroom, I would sit with Google Translate, trying to understand the lectures. And then it was the food where I, used, I eat fresh fish every day, and here you eat fried chicken. So it was, a, it was a big cultural difference right there. I do not like fried chicken. I'd rather have a baked salmon. When I first came over, I didn't have much football IQ. I thought I did, but I didn't. His work ethic was unbelievable. We challenged him uh, with, with, with what we call basic training. Everybody told me I was going to die. It's going to be the worst thing you ever experienced. He never flinched. He never slowed down. Uh, he embarrassed a whole lot of little guys. I think one of the things Coach Gillespie saw that I did was I never quit. One year, he was the only big guy to ever make it through the whole workout. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. I said, hey, this kid's going to be special because he's got a will of a lion and a desire to push himself and he's got a base of fitness that we can work with, and we just got to make him strong. So I got to Liberty in January 2015. We completed spring ball. It was a learning process for me. In July 2015, I had a lower back injury that continued all through fall. So I finished training, I was ready to go. And then back in spring again in 2016, I had my first knee injury, was, was an ACL tear and meniscus tear. 
And on the day I was going to get cleared for my ACL tear, I did a jumping test and I tore my ACL again during the jumping test. So I had to have my second ACL and meniscus surgery, which led to me missing that seasoning as well. Did all the rehab again, did very good. And then again, during spring ball, I did rehab and I managed to tear my meniscus again, which put me back another month. So overall, since I got here, I've only been healthy for half a year. Well, the setbacks are truly the biggest problem that we, one of the biggest problems we face with these young men is uh, every time you set back, you, you, you get discouraged. You start to question yourself, you start to question the whole process. I had some bad days, some bad memories. It was hard. I needed a lot of support from my coaches, friends and family. I remember being that age and not knowing, hey, what, what, what do the coaches hate me? Are they mad at me? And, and help them understand, no, 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 no. We love you. We want to help you uh, be successful. That's our goal. And as long as we have a young man, particularly with Ernst's uh, mentality, man, we, hey, we'll bend over backwards, whatever you need to do to help you be successful, not just in the game of football. That's where Liberty football coaches separate themselves from other coaching staff. There was one day I told everybody I was going to quit football because of injuries. I told them I wanted to quit and they all supported me in my decision and we all talked through it. Uh, I even cried a little bit. But at the end of the day, Coach Dan was, I'm not letting you quit. You've gone through too much. We're going to overcome this and you're going to play football. I've seen this happen at other schools where the kid finishes, done. they're done playing with or they can't play anymore. They're just like, get rid of the kid. We don't need him. Don't do anything with him. Don't help him. And our mentality is, hey, I want to see you be successful in life after football. That's more important to us than success on the field. It meant a lot to me that no matter what I decided to do, the coaches supported me, but it also meant a lot that they said, no, we're not giving up, you're playing. I don't care what you're saying, we're gonna do this. And just having somebody say that to me, believing in me, it really helped a lot. Ready? I've been working so hard for this, so two years of injuries, and today I'm finally going to be able to show the coaches how good I could be. I feel great. I feel powerful, explosive. I feel fast, and I'm just ready to tackle. I haven't tackled somebody in two years, and I'm, I'm just ready. So the first day was, was great. Uh, I was having a blast. It was honestly one of the best days in my life. And then the next day, um, something happened with my knee. I was just stretching, and something popped. Uh, I kept practicing for about 30 minutes, but after that, it was too much pain, and they decided to pull me off. So we talked to the doctors, and we decided to have a scope, because the MRI was negative. They couldn't really see what's wrong, so you had to scope it. So when the doctor came in, we all went into the room. Me, Barry, the doctor, Coach Gill, and Coach Dam. I also called my girlfriend on speakerphone. And right there, he was saying that I had pretty severe arthritis on my right knee at a young age, and he highly recommended that he would pull me from playing football. I like to call myself a tough guy. I like to say, if I get an injury, I'll just keep going till somebody tells me to stop. But when it comes to arthritis, it's kind of the more you do, the more you injure yourself. And it's something you can't really heal. You can only help prevent it further. So when I get old, I would like to play with my kids. I'd like to have a social life. I like to be active. And I, when the doctor told me, if you were my son, I would not let you play football, that was enough for me. It was time to hang the cleats up. I'm Norwegian, so we don't show emotion. It's just how it is. So every time something bad happens to me, I move on pretty quickly, and I don't let anybody see it if I'm sad, mad, or happy. So Sarah, my girlfriend, she's really been a good support staff for me here in the States. She's really just broken down that wall. So everybody has been praising me, saying, oh, Ernst, you have such a good attitude in this, but that's what I show them. I don't show them the emotional side of Ernst, which I only show Sarah. When I first got to Liberty University, um, I was just here to play football. But overall, Liberty has just matured me a lot and it made me a man. Having all those injuries and just moving on has helped me kind of, when I do hit a big rock in the road, I will be able to go through that. I'll be able to find a way to go through everything because, I mean, if you can battle three knee surgeries in a year, well, four now, uh, yeah, I, I think you can do anything. If I could buy stock in Ernst Anderson, I would buy stock. 
he is going to be a hugely successful man. He's a man of character. He is mature beyond his years. He's got an incredible work ethic and he understands the big picture. I will always be proud to have always said I coached Ernst Anderson. Thanks again to our good friend, Mike O'Neill, for producing that piece. And guys, I know we did a piece a little bit ago on Kendra Jones, who tore ACL once. I mean, Ernst Anderson tore it twice. I can't even imagine going through yeah. the same surgery twice. I mean, Yeah, four knee surgeries know. in yeah. all during his time. <laughs> Never played a single down of football. First of all, you got to love seeing Bill Gillespie in back-to-back -back pieces <laughs> yeah. uh, on the tops of the yeah. year. It just yeah. tells you what kind of guy he is. But Ernst, you know, mm -hmm. it'd be easy to be bitter. It'd be easy to be upset, sure. angry at the world yeah. if you went through something like that. But I love his attitude of, I've learned from it, now I'm going to be a better person. And I think that's kind of a lesson we all can learn, no matter what we go through, as long as you take something out of it and to take forward with you into life, then it can be a, a time that was well spent. I think it's cool, too. He's a, he's a young man, obviously, didn't get to play down to Liberty yeah. football. You'd think he'd be focused on right now, I want to at least play one down, one game of Liberty football, but just the foresight to think about you know, family in the future, yeah. I thought was refreshing and impressive Absolutely. as well. Well, hey, still to come, we head to the rink where I try to coach up a less than talented goalie. It's a heartwarming story, really, an inspirational tale, one that you'll want to see, so stay with us. Meet William Byron, Liberty University student and Xfinity Series driver of the number nine Chevrolet. Since William was a child, he dreamt of racing. His continued partnership with Liberty University means he's able to pursue his college degree while chasing the checkered flag. Look for William Byron and the Liberty University number no. nine Chevrolet on race day during the Xfinity Series this season. Liberty Flames basketball is ready to heat up the Vine Center. Don't miss a second of the action. Get your tickets now at LibertyFlames.com. Welcome back to Game On. Well, today we've been sharing our favorite stories of 2017. They've been encouraging and inspirational, and this next story completely breaks that mold. Why not end with some fun, right? You may not know, our guy Rhett McGibbon coaches the Division III Liberty Hockey team, and one night he had an incredible talent try out for his squad. Here now is my favorite story of the past year. Hey guys, welcome to the La Jolla Ice Center. This is the Division III locker room where I spend most of my Monday nights throughout the course of the year. It's been a bit of a tough first semester for us. We just recently had one of our goaltenders decide he's going to study overseas next semester, so we had to quit the team. But fortunately, the guys found a goaltender to come out and try out with us tonight, so I'm excited to see what he can do. See you out on the ice. So uh, with this new goaltender tonight, we're really hoping to get like a veteran presence on the back end. We're a young team, a guy that shows a high level of maturity, and also you know just will lead us into the second semester. So I'm really excited to see who it is. Oh. You guys are kidding me, guys. Rhett may have acted disappointed, but deep down, I knew he was glad to see me. Coppers are fine. Just don't take his teeth out. See? He really cares. My tryout would begin with a nice little warm-up. They're just going to basically, they're going to be a line of guys here in the middle on the far side. And it's just going to be like shot, shot, shot. That sounded yeah. easy enough. Shoot at his head. Wait, what? Fill up the net. They're trying to ring my bell, aren't they? <laughs> Your coach is a real jerk, huh? Yeah. Hate that guy. Things may have gotten off to a rough start. Oh! 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 Oh boy. Is that even legal? Is that even legal? I think I don't know if that's actually legal. But as time went on, my natural athleticism began to take over. There we go, big stop. Oh, that's another big stop. I cut him first. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, oh big no. stop. Get her out. <laughs> you 
you know, and I, I give him a lot of credit here. So far, you know, he did pretty well in the shootout, and then on the drills, he was stopping pucks. Like I said, up top, he was excellent. So, yeah. you know, like just one more mile to go here yeah. in this next little scrimmage. This was the opportunity I'd been waiting for. Game-like conditions, a chance to show Rhett that I was ready to lead his team. I could smell that starting goalie spot now. I also smelled something else. Man, did somebody throw up in this mask? This is disgusting. I was ready for action, but things would start out a little slow. Should have brought a deck of cards or something. A lot of downtime in this game. I, was, I need a lawn chair, maybe. Some stool of some kind. But my time of rest and relaxation wouldn't last long. Yeah, that a babe. Hey, get, whoa, hey. That's on him. We all saw it. That's on him, right? Hey, let me down out here, bud. You know, they say the game of hockey is just like life. Other people are going to consistently let you down. You just got to do everything on your own. Oh, big stop. You got the lead now. Always happens in hockey, Matt, and you know it. I was talking about that veteran presence, yeah. maturity. A couple big stops at one end, you know, your team I, responds. I made a couple of just little comments, just try to pick you guys up yeah. a little bit. I think it resonated. In the end, my cat-like reflexes and obvious hockey IQ helped lead my team to the win. I gave you all I got, Coach. I think you did a good I gave job. You, all I got. you did a great job. But that sweet taste of victory would soon turn sour with the harsh yeah, news off. Rhett delivered. Well, at the end of this one, you know, Matt, um, unfortunate news. I just got in touch with the registrar, and you have to be under 30. And I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Wow. It's a bummer, but, uh, you know, I've been needing to spend more time with my family lately, yeah. so this will just give me an excuse to do that. Uh, I want to give all the credit, though, to the guys out there. Really let me see all the shots today. Uh, you know, you just take it one shot at a time, one game at a time, and, you know, the good Lord willing, you'll go back out there again, but... Uh, if it was two years earlier, I don't know what could have been, but I know it would have been good. You saw glimpses, right? I sure did. And you'll be able to tell your grandkids about it someday. I will. I will. Thank Just you, Coach. Out. Thanks, You're Coach. Welcome. You're welcome. My career may have been cut short, but after this, at least I'll always have Rhett's respect. <laughs> He's an idiot. I know what you're thinking. Boy, it seems self-serving to pick a piece about yourself to, to have for the, you know, and maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. But it was a good time. I enjoyed being there, Rhett, with uh, all your guys. And I got to say, I was a pr pretty sore after that. Oh, I'm sure. You know, I remember the first time I ever played goal as a kid and my back was aching. Yeah. So I'm sure it was probably was the same it. for yeah. you. Also, I think a lot of the guys were having fun. You know, they kind of asked, can we have the green light to shoot out of space? <laughs> yes. And, you know, I had you, to, you I had gave to it say to him. yes. Yeah, he gave it to him all right. Yeah. And I will say, I didn't know these two before I watched this feature, and I will say it describes you both perfectly. It's, yeah, it it sold you on us, didn't it? That's why you came. You watched that, yeah, and you're like, that's, that's where I want to be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was it. That was it. That well, was if you want to see more great stories like that, hit us up on social media at GameOnLU. And check out our website, GameOnLU.com. Have a happy new year, a great 2018, and we'll see you right back here next week.